Hey everybody, welcome back to the Redneck Country Podcast. I'm your host, Clayton, and we're here with our co-host, Connor. So, what's going on in your life? What's up, everybody? So, to start off, uh, the other day I got a thing in the mail from the from the Marines. And it was this thing that I could fill out and I could, and then I could send it back. I could fill out my information and then send it back to them. And, uh... I think if I filled it out and sent it back to him, I'd get like a free shirt or something. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want a free shirt? Yeah, I know. Everything's so expensive and, you know, shirts ain't that cheap anymore, so I mean. Yeah, so I would ask you, so why why do you decide to join the, what did they say, the Marines? Yep, it was the Marines. Someone asked you, so why do you decide to join the Marines? Uh, well, I got a free t-shirt. Yeah, that's 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 a good enough reason for me. Really seems like they're the military's trying to find recruits. I mean, it seems like the numbers have been dropping lately. Yeah, like just the fact that they sent they're like they're sending uh, things out in the mail to people, trying to get them to recruit into the military, just shows that they don't have enough people joining the military. I guess. Yeah. I mean, the problem, <clears throat> the problem nowadays is America is just full of a bunch of wimpy kids who can't do nothing. The sight of a gun just offends them. They, yeah, people like that. I mean, yeah, it's not, America is not how it used to be. It's just the military does not seem very at its strongest right now. So, I mean, it seems like... <laughs> Like, if so, other countries are going to invade us, now would be the time because our military is very weak. And one thing that will scare me from joining the military now, nowadays, is because you never know what you'll have to be required to do. Like, in the military, you just sign up. You, Yeah, you're going to have to do stuff that you don't want to do, but now, who knows? That's, who knows? It's the next, it's another level seems like you never know what you'd have to do like i wouldn't want to be having to be forced to take american guns away i wouldn't want to have to do that i wouldn't want to have to enforce some of the laws that they're trying to pass nowadays yeah i mean it's yeah the way our government is nowadays i mean just down at the border i mean the whole thing between texas and yeah our government it just messed up. You know there's a law now. Apparently in New York City apparently in New York City these people were renting a house from a homeowner from a person who owned the house and apparently the renters weren't paying their rent like they should or something and, and the homeowners they came in and switched the locks and then they got arrested, the homeowner got arrested for switching the locks in their house because the renter wasn't paying the rent. That's just messed up. I mean, it, it's their property. They own it. They should have the right to do that. I mean, when you get to the point where the government is regulating what you're doing on your own property, that's, that's way too far. I know, and you're not paying the rent, and the homeowner is paying the property tax and all the expense expense to keep that house going, and you're not paying the rent, and then you get arrested for switching the locks. That's kind of, that seems a little bit, I don't know. Yeah, and that's one thing that will scare me from joining the military or any, or even getting in the police, because that's the kind of stuff that you might have to be forced to do. Like, arrest a homeowner for switching the locks. If you don't do it, you know, you get put in prison or executed. Yeah. Did you see that in Texas, there, apparently, they were trying to pass a law that said that Texas, like, the state of Texas could, uh, could arrest and, uh, any, like, illegals or anybody like that, they could arrest and deport them back to Mexico. Or wherever they came from. Yeah, I've seen something about that. But, enough of that. Alright, 
I guess we'll move on to our did you know section. Uh, so I got one here, but first before I read it off, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Okay, give it to me. What animal do you think kills the most people per year? What animal? Uh... Uh... A lion? Lion? Okay. So I got a list here of the... Yeah, top ten. So, starting at the bottom is lions. Lions kill 200 people a year. And hippos kill 500 people a year. Elephants kill 600 people a year. Crocodiles kill 1,000. Scorpions kill 300 and, oh, 3,300. Asian bugs kill 10,000 people a year with the Chagas disease. And Dogs with rabies kill 59,000 people a year. Snakes kill 138,000 people a year. Humans kill 400,000 people a year. And at the top place you got mosquitoes who kill 725,000 people a year. Who would have thought a mosquito would be at the top of that list? I know. I mean... Mosquitoes kill, or they carry a lot of diseases. Then you squash them and it literally looks like blood. It looks like human blood almost. Because they suck so much blood that if you squash it, it looks like blood. Seems like it is. Alright, sorry about that guys, but my headphones went dead or so, um, so I had to switch them out. Okay, I got some... Did you know facts about the, about the army? So, did you know that the army is older than the country? And by country, I mean the U.S. You did? Okay. We were here before our country was founded. We had to defeat the British to form our country. Yeah, that makes sense. It says down there, the below, it says, The measure to create a unified continental army to be led by George Washington was passed by the Second Continental Congress on June 14, 1775. So technically, the United States has, ha has had an army for a year longer than it's been a country. And I got one more. It says, Did you know there have been only five five-star generals in the army? The rank of five-star general didn't exist until 1944, and it was only given to five men, including former President Dwight D. Eisenhower. The ranks were retired in 1981 when the last surviving five-star general, Omar Bradley, died. Today's sponsor of the channel is RTB Art. If you're someone who likes arts and crafts and like watching videos about them, this is the place you want to be. But I do have one question. Are these bulletproof? I got the target set up down range. I got this uh, very real gun. It's um, a four bore rifle. And we're gonna see how it holds up. Firing. Let's check it out. As you can see, there's no mark on this painting. It is bulletproof. Go check him out and yeah. The link is in the description below. Now back to the video. So we got some mail from our listeners yep i actually i got one right here it says it's from a guy named jimbo i, I guess he's a subscriber it says love the channel you guys are so funny p.s don't eat all the cookies at once. Looks like he's put something else in there. Looks like a sock. It's kind of soggy though. What's it got on it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Yeah, I'd say that's enough mail unboxing for now. Let's let's move it on. So, by the title and thumbnail of this video, you're probably wondering when we get to this topic. Is Godzilla in the Bible? Yeah, I did a little a little bit of reading from Job chapter 41. And basically it the background behind all this is do you know what Job he lost everything? But he was still trusting God and stuff. And yeah, he was about to give up. And then God came to him and was telling him about his creation, everything he created. So throughout this whole section, he's talking about, he yeah, had describing all these different animals and stuff God created. And then, yeah, finally you get to chapters 40 and 41. And it brings up a lot of debate because. He starts talking about these creatures, the first one called the Behemoth, and the second one called Leviathan. A lot of people have, they debate about the subject because these two animals, I mean, they're obviously not anything that's living now. So a lot of people will say, well, they're just imaginary creatures. These animals never existed. So basically in these two chapters, God is, he's trying to tell Job just how powerful he is. So, in the last few chapters, God is describing real animals. So why would he, in just these two chapters, just completely make something up? Why would he be like, hey Job, I'm powerful, and I'm just going to show you this imaginary creature to show you just how powerful I am, that it doesn't make sense. Yeah, why would the Bible say, talk about them like that then? They're obviously something real. I think there's something kind of like dinosaurs were, but I don't know. Yeah, it says in Job 41, verse 18, His sneezes flash forth light, and his eyes are like the eye of dawn. Verse 19, Out of his mouth goes burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goes smoke. I mean, yeah, it says this creature, I mean, it has can breathe fire, it's breathing flames out of its mouth and smoke through its nostrils, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, it seems like it was almost a step ahead of the dinosaur yet. Yeah. Like it was something greater than the dinosaur. So there's this fictional creature, Godzilla, and this creature from the Bible called Leviathan. It's kind of interesting how similar they are. I mean, both of these creatures are described as these huge beasts. And... Yeah, both of them, it says it, how they can, they live, they can live in water and on land. And, yeah, it talks about how, yeah, people try to go up against it. They can't do anything to it. It talks about how the arrows and sling, sling stones and, yeah, spears, they can't harm this creature at all. It, it doesn't phase it at all. And, also... This creature, it says it can breathe fire. This Leviathan creature. It's kind of interesting. It, this creature, Godzilla, can it doesn't breathe fire, but it breathes a, it has a, a nuclear breath type thing where it just breathes radiation and completely just burns everything. It's kind of interesting. To me, it sounds like some kind of supernatural creature that God created specially for something. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm not I'm not positive about this, but I think I'm pretty sure the the people who made the original Godzilla movie, they actually based Godzilla off this creature, Leviathan. It's kinda kinda interesting. And you know, it, it makes a lot of sense because this creature in the Bible, it's if you go through and read Job chapter forty one, it's really the the real life Godzilla. It says in 
Verse 25, when he rises up, the mighty are afraid because of the crashing, they are bewildered. So it sounds like it's a pretty big creature. It says the crashing, they are bewildered because of the crashing. The sword that reaches him cannot prevail, nor the spear, the dart, or the javelin. He regards iron as straw, bronze as rotten wood. Yeah, and what's kind of interesting too is, you know, you go to different places around the world and there's all these different legends about dragging this stuff. Like everywhere you go, they have their own specific story. And a lot of them, you know, they talk about these creatures being able, being able to breathe fire. And a lot of people just look at that and they're like, no, that's, that's just fake, that's fictional, there's no way that could happen. Yeah, but in the Bible, it talks about a creature being able to breathe fire. So if this one creature can, why couldn't there be more? You know? That's just a, that's just a myth. Yeah, I think there, I mean, if the Bible talks about, like, creatures breathing fire and stuff like that, I think at some point there were creatures like that roaming the earth. But who knows what it all out. What all it was like. Yeah, I mean, if you just look at look at animal stay, you have the the electric eel that can actually create an electric pulse. You got fish that have that have lights on them. They have the ability to create light. And also, the lightning bug can do the same thing. And also, there's an insect. I forget what it's called. Some kind of beetle. I think it can it can actually spray this this extremely hot liquid like I, I forget how many degrees it is but it's extremely hot so if god can create all these creatures then yeah he can create some kind of creature that can breathe fire yeah obviously he can i mean you look back in the bible all the miracles that he did i mean what's creating a creature like this to him there's no telling what all what all kinds of creatures used to roam this earth. There's no telling. I mean, just stuff, just stuff like this makes you wonder. I don't get how, like, some people say the earth is like, some will say 60 million years old. Some will say 200 million years old. I don't, I don't get where they come up with these numbers. I never could understand that. Yeah, the guy, Charles Darwin, came up with this idea of evolution. And... When he came up with this idea, it was just a, a theory. He was like, yeah, just wondering, where does life come from? And he came up with this idea that that at one point in time, uh, a animals was, uh, they just got mutations and evolved into other animals. And obviously, the process of evolution, it would have had to take millions and billions of years for that to happen. But what's kind of interesting too is the guy who, Charles Darwin, the guy who came up with evolution, he didn't believe it at all. I mean, it was just an idea he came up with and and he even said that, yeah, there's no possible way that could have actually happened. Yeah, and then people just took it to a whole nother level and look at where we're at now. How old do you think the earth actually is? According to the Bible, different information you get from the Bible, says it's only about 6,000 or something like that. Yeah, that's what, that's what I would say too. And because like what it says in the Bible, like the, I mean what the Bible says, that's the greatest science book you're ever going to get or history book or anything. So that's the, that's facts right there. When I was a kid, I was, I was always interested in dinosaurs. So Obviously, if you read a lot of dinosaur books, there's going to be a lot of stuff about evolution in it. So I started, from that, I started to become kind of interested in the debates between evolution and creationists. And, in fact, I got a, I got a book right here. So, if you can see it. Jurassic Park book. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. But, um... A Jurassic Park? Hey. There you go. Does it have a lot of evolution stuff in it, too? Eh, not, not really. I mean, actually, the guy who wrote the book, Jurassic Park, 
he didn't believe in evolution at all. And, yeah. And I mean, there's there's plenty of stuff about evolution in the book because obviously he wanted to make it seem real. So the characters in the book believe in evolution, except for one character. There's one character who doesn't. And it's the character in the book is kind of... Michael Crichton uses that... That's the author of the book. He uses that character to give his viewpoints. And especially in his second book, he has a lot of stuff in there that debates between evolution and and creationism and stuff like that. It's actually really interesting. Well, that's a plus. Sounds like it would be. And talking more about the Levathon, it says in Job 41 verse 30, his underparts are like sharp pieces of pottery. He spreads out like a threshing sledge on the mud. So do you think it's talking about this animal's claws? It says in 30, verse 33 too, nothing on earth is like him, one made without fear. It would be interesting if you could dig up like a skeleton of one of these things. I mean, who knows? Maybe we did. We just don't know it. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, they're digging up skeletons and they just probably assume it's another dinosaur or something. Yeah, we got we got kind of late on putting this podcast out. Time kind of got away from us. Yeah, we're still we're still trying to figure out it's kind of a routine to put these out. Ideal is to release a podcast maybe every other week and then but yeah, that's what we're trying to do, but we're still trying to kind of figure it out. But yeah, so if you guys have anything you want to suggest that we can do in our podcast or anything you want us to talk about, just leave a comment below and we'll do it. And hit that little bell down there to get notifications. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. We better wrap this up. And don't send any more mail like Jimbo. Please. Okay, yeah, we better wrap this one up. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.